Hey everyone, welcome to another week of Unreal Behavior Trees. So in this video, uh, we're gonna shift gears a little bit. In the very first video, I said, hey, these are the things that I'm not super happy with with current tutorials. Not enough background, well, I th think we mostly covered that. Um, not deep enough, and some of these other things of like, you know, these are some of the issues that I have. You know, some of the big ones here, like not deep enough, uh, there's no real, like everything just happens in a, in a static, simple little area. It's kind of bad AI, you know, I, this is all, these are all very valid things. And I have not helped with any of these so far because we're just learning the basics. But I think now it's time to jump in and start looking at a real test scenario, if that makes sense. A lot of times when you're building AI, you do it in a little sandbox and you get it mostly working or at least working pretty close. And then you throw it into a real level and eh, it kind of breaks down. And I've spent most of my career in the games industry working on AI of various types, mostly simulation AI. And I think that the, the biggest issue, or at least one of the most time consuming issues that comes up are all the little edge cases. There's little things that keep coming up that you just have to deal with. So let's take a look at kind of a more real world. <clears throat> and when I say real world, I'm gonna use it pretty loosely, but this is much more representative of what I would expect some kind of level to look like, at least as a relatively small one. And all of the stuff that I do can expand to a much bigger level, but this is much more representative of something that you might see. All I did was I, I spun up the first person shooter template, basically deleted everything, and then just created my own terrain here using some, some of Unreal's you know, deformation tools, tossed in a few trees and stuff that I found on some, you know, some of the free trees that are out there. Uh, I created this little simple fort. So there's these walls here, and then there's these four little buildings and a little thing there. Most of these are just default assets and textures. There's nothing too crazy here. You know, I threw in a couple other things. I was just playing, so, you know, like, there's a bunch of grass and stuff. Like, that was kind of cool to play with, just to see what that would look like. Actually, if you uh, load this thing for the first time, you're going to be waiting for a few minutes just for the shaders to all build. Uh, you know, you have a little platform over here. You can see the little, this is the, the player start object. So you can kind of see where I start. I threw a little thing in here. You know, fun stuff like this. There's also these guys, <clears throat> right? So here's one. This is a little, uh, a little AI guy. He doesn't actually do anything. If I ran this, uh, he does nothing. So he's pretty unexciting. They all are. There's a whole bunch of them. I can't actually, I can't even touch them. I can't do anything with them. So it's not super exciting right now. Our job is to fill out the AI. And I've done a couple of things. I had to really think about, you know, what do I want this tutorial to be? I think this whole thing, building this whole entire thing from scratch was probably a long weekend. It was a, you know, and a lot of it, Half of it was the level design and just like pulling out the level and playing with some of the Unreal tools. But I spent a day or so working on, you know, this this AI and where's it gonna go and all the tuning and all that kind of stuff. So some of the stuff I've left in. <clears throat> Specifically, there I know that I want patrolling AI and I don't think it's super interesting to create these patrol points. So I created these patrol points. And I've kind of spent some time tuning where they go. So I didn't feel like I wanted to delete these and replace them. Same thing with the people, like these enemies. You know, I spent some time figuring out like where's a good spot for them to go. So I didn't really feel like deleting all the enemies and replacing them. This is not a tutorial about how to make characters move and animate in Unreal. So I'm mostly gonna hand wave over that stuff. There are plenty of decent tutorials on that. And you know, if people request, I can do one. The conceit of this game, and the general sort of idea of this game, not that it's much of an idea, is that there are these little statues. There's one right here. Um, I actually haven't even made it collectible, but there's three of them. There's two more in that fortress area. And the idea is that you're supposed to collect the three. I mean, that's it. <clears throat> I wanted it to be kind of a stealth game, like a little stealth shooter. So I can run around like this if I want to, but I, if I hold down shift, 
I move slowly. I do more of a walk. Um, for the most part, the movement and everything is all generic first-person shooter stuff. I don't think I really touched any of that. You notice that I'm not shooting anything. Uh, I got rid of the actual projectile. So I want this to kind of be like you are an assassin and all you have is a knife. Or maybe not an assassin, but like all you have is a knife. So I could walk up to this guy and as long as I'm within a certain distance, like that'll register as a hit and I can basically kill this guy. If they're completely unaware of me, I can kill them in one shot. They automatically die in one hit. If they are aware of me, it, it'll probably be a couple of hits. I think it's two or three hits to, to do it. I have, I think, three hit points, maybe four, somewhere in that area. So if they hit me, and they do have guns, so they'll fire off their kind of standard Unreal projectile. So they're, you know, the, the like beige spheres, they'll shoot at me. If I had this guy shoot, that's what he would do. So that's the idea. That's kind of the gameplay. I want to have alarm states and all this other stuff. So I want to be like running around and like, oh, he sees me. You know, kind of Metal Gear Solid style where he'll, like a little exclamation point will appear above his head. And, you know, maybe I can run, I can sort of hide back here. And then, oh, he didn't see me. He'll keep going on his patrol. And if he did see me, he'll start shooting at me. You know, that kind of thing. So pretty, I think, typical... Um, like very typical kind of stealth gameplay. There'll be a little bit of tuning, there'll be a little bit of playing around, that sort of thing. So that's, that's the idea. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I want to do here is talk about what already exists. So I've, I've created this already. Um, I wanted to have everything working and stuff before I started recording this set of videos, uh, just so that I wasn't wasting time on going down like bad paths or anything. So what I've done is I've kind of nerfed that. I've, I've destroyed the AI nodes and things like that, which will recreate. But that means that I'm left with a, some leftover things that I, I just didn't think that there was going to be any use in going over again or really talking about because it's not, it's not the interesting part to watch me create that stuff. So we'll get through it as that stuff comes up, but there are a few things that already exist. First, as you've seen, these hunters, uh, where's one, here's one, these hunters already exist. I didn't feel like going through, you know, I spent a bunch of time placing where I wanted them and where these patrol points, that's what these blue guys are, where these patrol points were going to go. So it didn't make sense to do all that again. So here is the hunter. This is what the hunter uh, looks like. I've already set up all the things like you know, the model and animations, as you can see. So there's going to be some animations that they have. Um, that's all here. There's an AI controller class already called the Hunter AI Controller. So that's already been set. Um, you can see that over here. So that's already been set over here. And uh, there's a few, there's kind of one thing going on here in the event graph. The only thing that's really happening is that if this agent takes any damage then like this is just an event that happens and you'll kind of see where this where this goes through so if the player basically hits the enemy what it's going to do is say hey okay classes of the same type can't hurt each other so that so the enemy can't hurt itself other enemies can't hurt each other that's really the key there then we want to check for the damageable damageable component so enemies will all have a damageable component that's attached to them you can see here in the, the components down here, damageable uh, enemy, uh, sorry, up here. So damageable enemy, this is just a component that they have uh, that I wrote. And it will delegate to that. It'll say, great, um, call take damage on the damageable component. That's, that's all it does. The damageable component is kind of its own thing. If I were to go to this guy, this has some internal functions, um, take damage and all this other stuff. So this little function here does the actual damage thing and it does damage based on alarm levels and stuff. And we'll get into how this thing works, but it's the thing that does damage. Specifically, here we can look at the event graph, which is a little more interesting. Um, we can see, you know, on death and on take damage, it just delegates here to this take damage, kill enemy. There's nothing crazy going on here. And Unreal has a reasonable 
tutorial on how the damage system works. I'm really just using their damage system and keeping track of how many hit points they have and things like that and doing extra damage when, they, when there's a sneak attack. That's it. So there's nothing crazy going on here. Again, I'm happy to go through some of the stuff if anyone's curious. And this whole thing will be available somewhere. Probably GitHub. Uh, so that's kind of it for the hunter. There is a hunter AI controller. There's a begin play, which as we remember, we have to fill out with like, what's the behavior tree and so on. There's also a show suspicious. So I can send an event that says, hey, you're suspicious of something. And we'll see how that's done. But all it's all this thing is doing is saying uh, it's going to show a little billboard above their head. That's all this does. And this is just an event that I can send out. And you'll see where that's sent. So that's it for the controller. I'll kill this hunter as well. There's this on shoot notification. I'm really not going to go into this. Um, this is just a sort of notification that comes in. So. You know, we're probably not going to look at this, but this is basically how enemies shoot projectiles. You know, again, this is not specifically related to AI. This is just how things are shot. So I may or may not go into this. I probably won't. Uh, let's see. There's a patroller component that, that hunters have. So if I go back to the hunter, they have damage but they also have this patroller. The patroller I left in, it's a very simple component. Um, there's very little here. Basically, it's an array of these patrol points where these patrol points are actors. So it's literally just an array of patrol points. And that's what these blue things are. So if I go to like this, I'll go to one of these guys. One of these, these guys are a little more interesting. So I'll go to like this guy. So if I go here, this particular hunter, and I dig into this hunter's patroller, we can see that I have these four specifically tuned patrol points. This hunter will go between these four. And it's the four that you can see currently on my screen right now. These are the four patrol points. So it's this one, there's one in there, this one, and this one. I'm pretty sure it's these four. Um, it sort of doesn't matter, but that's, that's the point, is I can just assign these patrol points easily. And it's a simple thing that you can do. It's an easy way to just set up these patrol points, to just have these arrays. We can look at this guy, for instance. This guy has two patrol points. It's probably these two. He'll go between those two. Some of them, like these guards back here, have no patrol points. Oops, not you. This guard, patroller, no patrol points. The behavior is if they patrol, they will go back and back between their patrol points. If they don't patrol, they will not go through. They'll just stand there. Um, it has some functionality. It's actually kind of, it's fairly simple, but it has a little bit of coolness to it. Uh, let's patroller, where it has this loop. And uh, however, if you can see it, it says, if true, patrols will circle to the beginning after the last node. If false, they will ping pong. So ping ponging is better for like some of these wall guards where we want them to go, you know, this, then this, then this, then go backwards. So it goes, you know, A, B, C. B, A, B, C, B, A, and so on, as opposed to A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. That's the difference. Uh, patrol point tolerance just says how far away from the patrol point do I have to be before it registers that I'm there. That's all that this is doing. I can look at these things. I basically just have a bunch of helper functions. So I have get next patrol point. It internally keeps track of which patrol point I'm at. It figures out what the next one is you know, increments or decrements doing ping pong or not. So like, there's just nothing super interesting here, whether or not I have patrol points, getting a particular patrol point, whether I'm at the current patrol point that I'm looking at, and so on. So there's just some stuff here. So like I said, I'm not going to go into detail there. Um, you can look into it when you get the code itself. And what we're going to focus on is the actual AI side of things. These alarm levels I'll go into, I just didn't want to recreate them because they're referenced in a few places. And then here in AI, there's nothing. This is where all the other stuff is going to go. In terms of custom stuff, besides bringing in a few things like Mannequin and this, you know, uh, Mizamo, Mixamo, Anim Pack, whatever this is. Um, so aside from this, there is this first person BP. I think I created a few things in here. Here's the damageable stuff. 
That's the projectile. Oh, noise generator. We'll talk about some of this stuff a little bit. Melee attacker. These are things that are on the player. You know, the player has their own component. But again, this is just gameplay stuff. So I'm not going to go into it except as it pertains to the game, like the actual AI side of things. So since I chose not to get rid of this, you know, Hunter AI controller, we know that we need the four things, right? We need the character, which we already have. It's these hunters. Um, there's one down here. Here he is. We have these hunter controllers, or you know, the AI controller. And the other two big things we're going to need are the behavior tree and the blackboard. So we're just going to create those. Uh, we're just going to start by creating those right now. So I'm going to go here, artificial intelligence, behavior tree. And I'm going to say hunter AI behavior tree. And I'm going to create a new blackboard which is here. I'm going to say Hunter AI Blackboard. Now, I've spoken about this a little bit. Um, should we have multiple um, assets? You know, do we want to have a bunch of trees? Like, I don't think so. I think we want, I think we want to make the same behavior for all these guys. If I were going to have different enemy types, they would likely have different, uh, different behavior trees. And I may add that as we go on, as we go further. Uh, so I don't need you. So if I pull out this guy and I pull out this guy, here are my things. Let's just start very simply. We're going to go here. We're going to open up the Hunter AI controller. And in here, we need to be able to start actually setting some stuff up uh, and setting up our um, setting up our thing. The first thing that we want to do is we want to say use Blackboard. And we're going to set it to our Blackboard that we just created. And that's it. And we also want to say use a particular behavior tree. So we're going to do that as well. Uh, use B, sorry, run. It's not use, run behavior tree. And we're going to use our behavior tree. And that's it. That's all that we really have right here. OK. So let's start thinking about the actual design for the behavior tree itself, the behaviors that we want to be able to do. Much like you know our stuff over here, uh, I think it's really good to just draw this out as its own kind of thing. So we're going to do that. Uh, and so we always start with a root node. From that root node, a really good thing to think about is, or a good default, is to say, let's have a selector. Now, what are the things that we want to do? Now, I, I want to, and a common thing that I do here is I say, uh, I always want to have something where I'm trying to get the player. So like some kind of find target. And we'll say, you know, probably here we're going to find the target. It's going to be some service that runs a bunch of code that says, is there a target? Like, can I see this player? That's really what it is. I really want to have some kind of like, oh, do I see you? And then, you know, like you have character uh, who's kind of facing you, right? Um, I'm terrible at drawing. This looks like a tooth, but that's all right. So this character is like facing me and they have like a, oh no, you know, type thing going on. I really want to have that kind of thing. So I think that's the right, I think the right call is to have them constantly searching for some sort of target. And then down here, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, if you're searching for this target, have you actually found this target? Um, and so that I think is going to be another selector. But this selector is going to have a condition attached to it, which we'll do in blue, which will basically say, you know, has target. So this is going to have a decorator on it that says, do we have a target or not? And I can do a diamond or whatever, but this is good enough for now. So if I have a target, th so this is only going to run if I have a target. If I do have a target, then what we'll do is we'll say, okay, 
we want to have two different behaviors for whether or not we are fully like visible or something. So we're going to come down here. And I think at this point we can have a couple of sequences. So we'll have one here. And we're also going to have a thing here that says like fully spotted. So there's another condition here. And then this is a sequence and then these are just tasks. So this is going to be, you know, we need to set hostile and then down here, uh, we need to, feels like probably shooting is good. Shoot at player, right? That feels good. So to recap, we have a selector, this selector that says, Hey, do we even have a target? Because the, oh, the other side of the selector, of course, is um, another sequence here. I'm going to draw this a little more competently. Another sequence. Um, and then this is another kind of thing of like, well, we should probably check to see if they're spotted or whatever. We'll figure this out as we go. And so here I want to say, hey, we need to set us to some kind of suspicious state. And we'll, you know, we'll figure out exactly what that means. And then over here, we will do a look at. I want to look at where, you know, the suspicion and stuff is happening. And, you know, we'll add more to this. So basically, if we're fully spotted, we'll just attack. Otherwise, we'll go here. And there'll be some kind of timeout or something that says, hey, I have been fully spotted. And we'll figure out how all that stuff works. So this is kind of our like attack rung. That's kind of what's going on here. Really this whole thing is attack. That's the idea. So what else do we have? Well, the other big thing is if we don't have a target, we need to figure out what we want to do. So if we don't have a target, we'll come way over here and we'll probably do some other selector, much like we have over there. And then here we'll do the other types of behaviors. So uh, for the very, for very simple right now, you know, we may have some kind of like patrol. We'll do that for now. So maybe this is, maybe this isn't here. Maybe it's just like this. And we'll build up on this as we go. We will likely need more than this, but this is a good default. Or probably more likely, we're gonna have something like this. Um, where we're gonna say like, if we just wanna build this out, we'll have some kind of, uh, let's see. I would say, what does patrolling look like? So this is our patrol path. In fact, I should say, you know, has patrol points, right? So we have this thing here. And then down here, we'll say something like, um, you know, go to next point. And then down here, you know, we'll say like, wait, we want to wait at the patrol point for some amount of time. If we don't have a patrol state, I mean, we're going to wait like there's nothing we can do. We'll just hang out. It's probably fine like this. Uh, that's it. That's all we really have. Uh, and maybe we'll do nothing here. Who knows what we're going to end up doing. And this is our like, you know, I'm gonna say relaxed uh, state. So we have two major states. We have relaxed state and we have our attack state. Those are our two major things. I'll zoom this out a little bit. This is gonna be our starting tree and there's no way that we're shipping this. You never ship the first thing you write ever, but this is gonna be our starting tree. And I'll save that for the next video. So in the next video, we're going to take this tree and we're going to implement kind of a first pass of this. And it's going to require kind of a lot because most of the nodes that I've drawn here, many of them, 
maybe all except for the weight. And I guess to look at potentially, like most of these don't exist. So we're gonna write a bunch of tasks and things. Uh, but I'll save that for next time. Okay, I will see you next time.